Good morning. We're going to spend a few minutes this morning talking about leadership. This is chapter one um, in the text, and the text we're using for this leadership class is Leadership for Organizations by Wallman and O'Reilly. Uh, and it's a flat world textbook. I like flat world textbooks because they are, um, I don't want to say no nonsense, but they are easy for students to read and they're very comprehensible and you can either have a hard copy version of it or you can get their ebook on uh, through the internet, which, you know, is typically my preference. But I want to talk just a little this morning about just what is leadership and, and I've not definitely, I don't consider myself an expert by any means in leadership. I feel like I've been extremely successful in the healthcare space. I've been here working in the healthcare space as a leader for over 30 years and have always been able to exceed my goals that have been set for me for my you know, direct supervisor. Um, always been uh, focused on mentoring and training and education and motivating teams to reach their um ultimate capability. So I think I've been, again, extremely successful, but I don't consider myself an expert. I'm going to share with you, kind of interweave uh, what has worked for me, what hadn't worked for me as it, you know, over my years as a leader, and weave it into the concepts that uh, Wallman and O'Reilly have in the textbooks, because in this textbook, they seem to have taken maybe a little different route that, you know, the as opposed to some leadership books, they seem to have done, you know, try to incorporate some research into it. So it's not just uh, a bunch of opinions that somebody has put out there. So that's why we're, we're going to kind of move forward in this class, because it, what, what my goal in any class that I teach is I want to have individuals in that class, I want to help them build a toolbox, whether it's understanding you know, macroeconomics, microeconomics, financial concepts. I want them to be able to build a toolbox that's going to help them be successful either in their uh, academic lives or more importantly, maybe to be successful once they get out of school and get into the business world. And with that in mind, um, I want to just talk a little about before we jump into it, uh, some things that I find, you know, it's important. I mean, over the years I've been to countless leadership seminars with different companies I've worked for and this so-called experts or, you know, standing up in front of you spouting and, you know, walking around and dancing around and, you know, theirs is, you know, the way and the only way to do it. And it's made them successful. Um, while you can glean some information from those or glean some information, again, from this textbook, you'll glean some information by reading self-help books that you can go you know, to your local Barnes and Noble and pick up. But I think when it comes to leadership and trying to figure out, or not only just define leadership, but trying to figure out what works best for you, you have to consider a multitude of things. You have to consider what the situation is. Um, is the company that you're working for, is it a profit-driven company? Is it a customer service-driven company? Um, is it for-profit, not for-profit? Um, how much pressure uh, is going to be exerted on you as a leader uh, from maybe the board of directors or maybe from your CEO. So situation plays a lot into it. Second part is what kind of, what's the makeup of your team? Things have changed in leadership. I started noticing a change in about 20, I don't know, 2015, 2016, um, individuals, especially coming right out of college, they had a different mindset about what they wanted to do, had a different mindset about what motivated them. And, you know, were they interested in an, an additional um, educational opportunities to build their human capital? Um, how, what did it take to motivate them and to get them to put forth that extra effort so that everybody on the team is successful? And then on top of that, um, you you had the impact of COVID, and I guess it was in my last management opportunity was in you know Buffalo and working for a Blue Cross Blue Shield um, health plan, and 
they sent everybody home in March of 2020. So at that point, um, everybody became remote. And it is a definitely a different animal managing teams remotely as opposed to managing teams face to face. So um, I think it's going to take the makeup of your team and, you know, how, you know, what do you do to, to motivate that team and to mentor and to train and educate and, and help them improve their human capital so that it improves overall efficiency for the entire team. And then another issue is just what are your human characteristics? Are you a, um, I don't want to say an introvert or an extrovert. I mean, those are the two tails are, you, you know, on the distribution of characteristics. Or are you somewhere in between? Because when it comes to, to leadership and ability to motivate a team, you have to be comfortable in your own skin. You, there, there are going to be certain aspects of leadership that you gleam again through maybe this class or, or through other seminars or, you know, on the internet or reading books, but, and while they may be great ideas, they may not match with your characteristics. And if you're trying to implement um, a leadership style that is not correlated or not conducive with your uh, characteristics or your interpersonal skills, your team will pick up on that in a hurry. And it's going to be, it, they lose respect for you. And they just, they're going to be a team that may not want to follow you and may not want to to move forward with you as a leader. Uh, as I said, I'm gonna talk about some things in this class that have worked for me, some things that have worked and some things that haven't worked. And some things that <clears throat> work for one team as you move from you know, team to team within an organization, what works for one team may not work for the next team you work, you know, you're managing or you're leading. And it's certainly the case if you move from one company to the next, because every company has its own culture and every company has its way of doing things. So you, you have to you have to see and you have to kind of adjust it going forward, because it, at the end of the day, there, to me, there's two there's two things that kind of drive leaders and try to or, or I guess, make leaders more successful or help leaders to become more successful. <clears throat> and that is common sense, and that is flexibility. It's not a, leadership's not a one size fits all. It's, as I said, you're, you're talking about situation and different teams and different characteristics, and you have to mold yourself. You have to be flexible. I am constantly, over my years of leadership, I was constantly tweaking my leadership style and changing it from one leadership style to the next as I went from one team to the next. Um, it's, you know, do you, as we talked about teams earlier, is it a is it a young team that needs a lot of training and education and mentoring? Is it a, a, a more experienced team that it's more like more or less changing processes and procedures as you move forward? Uh, are you working in a a team that it's you know you you've got either exempt or non exempt employees and if you know you know within that team you may have a union shop and when you're dealing with a union shop it is it is a whole different ball game than just worrying about exempt and non-exempt. And, and we'll get into those some of those concepts going forward. To kind of <clears throat> move forward with this introduction and try to <clears throat> figure out what leadership is, uh, <clears throat> they give you a, a couple of definitions in the book. One that, that I liked was <clears throat> supposedly uh, General President Eisenhower, depending on um, what, what you want to refer to him as. Some people just called him Ike. But he said, leadership is, is the art of getting someone to do something you want done because he wants to do it. Very common sense, very, uh, you know, understandable. Uh, and I think that would, would be great if, if everybody could kind of follow that. But not everybody is, is cut out to be the leader that Ike was. <clears throat> My favorite definition of, of leadership goes back to Thomas Paine, who one of the leaders in the the late 1700s when we were trying to get the constitution and declaration of independence set up and we gave keep the country and get the country moving forward <clears throat> and thomas paine supposedly said either lead follow or get out of the way and that worked well then and i think it works well now and supposedly uh, george Patton and in, in world war ii was was famous for using that same concept lead follow get out of the way 
kind of the, the tweak on that um, type of definition or that approach to leadership is one that supposedly is, is, is I guess, um, referenced back to Krista Knudsen, who said, I look to others to decisively lead me, to actively follow me, or to step aside, which is probably more politically correct than Thomas Paine's lead, follow, get out of the way. But it's still, it, it's saying, it's it's referencing the same concept as we talk about leadership. And then if you want to, <clears throat> if you want to talk about leadership, it, it comes down to just, you know, what is leadership? And there are thousands of different, you know, formal definitions of leadership. Every talking head that is supposed to be an expert in leadership has their own variation of it. And <clears throat> so everybody's pitching their own secret sauce about leadership. But the, the book actually talks about it's the process of existing intentional influence toward the ideas, beliefs, values, capabilities, and behaviors of others. Willingly on their part toward an organizational goal or a vision. And as you as you kind of follow the book down through talking about um, leadership, they they kind of start parsing it out for you. And they talk about, you know, it, leadership is attributed to people. It's, you know, organizations don't really show leadership. It's it's the individuals within that organization that shows leadership. Because most um, production environments and most organizations understand that leadership is key to sustain competitive advantage. And that's, that's what companies are about. They want to sustain that competitive advantage. They want to remain profitable. And they view leadership as a key to reaching those goals. Uh, secondarily, they say leadership's a process, and it is a process. It's a process for you as a leader. It's a process for the follower, because you having successful processes and working your leadership style is it. As I said earlier, I've tweaked my leadership style multiple times, and I continue to tweak it depending on situation, team, characteristics of that team. Uh, what the circumstances are within the organization's culture. And it is a process. You're going to continually tweak that process. And to be successful, one of the, as, we, as I talked about earlier, flexibility is key to being a great leader. And then you have, um, and then also in the leadership process, <clears throat> they talk in the book about, you know, your title versus your ability to lead. And I've had individuals in the past that that have worked for me either as a as a supervisor, as a manager, as a director, and as they kind of move up that corporate ladder, so they they go from a you know individual contributor to a supervisor, and you know they they're starting to learn the steps of leadership, and you're helping them. But once they get to a manager and a leader level, some individuals just sit back and you know they. They think because they have a title of manager or a title of leader that, you know, or a title of director, that automatically makes them a leader and they don't have to work at it anymore. Um, and I think that differentiates your title from your ability to lead because individuals that lead, again, are flexible and they're constantly tweaking that process as they go forward. And then, again, you have, you have formal versus informal leaders. And I think about all the teams I've had in the past, I've always had individual contributors who, who didn't want the responsibility of, of a leadership role and climbing that corporate ladder, but they were kind of the informal leaders of the team. They were the ones, the subject matter experts, and they were the ones that the team members would go to and ask questions and you know seek their guidance and seek their expertise on on how to tweak processes or how to tweak, you know, procedures, how to be more efficient in their everyday jobs. So you have that opportunity as you develop your leadership style to reach out to these informal leaders to, to kind of build your leader team as you move, your leadership team as you move forward. And there are various levels to exhibit leadership. As I said, you've got individual level, you've got the team level, you've got an organizational level. And it all depends on where you want to fit into an organization or where you aspire to fit into an organization as a leader is going to 
determine to some extent how you tweak your leadership characteristics and capabilities going forward. And then lastly, they talk about active process. They talk about positive uh, leadership style, and they talk about willingness, willingly influenced. And that goes back to your followers and your team. And, and I've worked in companies where directors and vice presidents would, you know, they berate their team members. They're constantly driving and, you know, berating and pushing and demeaning them. And, and that is, that is not a leadership style that is conducive to very few team members or very few followers to incentivize them to, to be productive and to attain and to maximize those skill levels and to be uh, leaders within a team. So, just be careful on your leadership style because that that kind of leadership style is typically not very conducive to a very productive team because you have to remember that, or at least it's, it seems like that it, if you look at that continuum of leadership capabilities on one end of the curve or one end of the tails, you have the micromanager who has to have their finger and everything it has to be done his or her way and if you don't do it his or her way, they don't want you on the team. They don't want anybody to question how they do things. They they have a vision on how they want to get from point A to point B, and they're not going to take any uh, suggestions from anybody. It's going to be done their way, and they're going to constantly micromanage those teams. And then you have on the other end of the tail or the other end of the distribution, you have the individual that empowers individuals. Uh, fortunately, I've worked for the most part uh, with the exception of my first position right out of graduate school, I've worked for individuals that are, they're more than willing to empower you as long as you're willing to accept responsibility. And I had at the last stop in, in Buffalo at the Blue Cross Blue Shield, I had five or six managers working for me and I had one individual who was a micromanager. I mean, that individual would not turn loose of anything, would not let... Uh, their supervisors make any decisions without checking to them first. And then on the other end of the tail, I had a manager that said, hey, we need to we need to go from point A to point B. I don't care how you do it. Here's the goal we need to, we need to achieve. Come to see me if you have questions. But otherwise, you're on your own. I'm here to help you. I've always been more of a leader that that I'm there to kind of run interference. I'm kind of there to help train, educate, motivate, mentor, and run interference and provide those resources to the teams that will help them to achieve the goals that we're all trying to achieve. With that, we're going to uh, end segment one. And when we come back, we'll, we'll kind of discuss what's the difference between managers and management style and leaders and leadership style. So talk to everybody again in a few minutes. Thank you.